If and you don't know your way around the fretboard, you ain't no niece or nephew of mine. So learn these sick fretboard navigation tricks I'm gonna show you today and become part of the family. I'm Uncle Ben, and this is why you suck at guitar. Well, hey there guys, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben Eller, and on today's video I'm going to show you guys a couple of useful tips and tricks that you can use to understand the neck more better. Yes, that's right, more better. One of these is a popular trick that every guitar player knows, or at least should know, but some of them might just be the missing key that you need to open your third eye and unlock the potential of the fretboard. These are the secrets that the guitar Illuminati doesn't want you to know. This week, everybody who supports me on Patreon is also going to be getting an additional bonus lesson to go along with this one to help you guys start memorizing the notes on the fretboard. All these things and more you can have for the low, low cost of just $1 a month, so be sure to click the Patreon link in the video description below and sign up to my page today. If you like this video and want to say thanks and help support my channel, you can also click the Sweetwater affiliate link in the video description and buy yourself something nice. I like things that are nice, which is why I won't be using this DoD grunge pedal in today's video. Let's kick this lesson off with a simple concept I stumbled across years ago that I like to call Big Brother, Little Brother. See, I grew up with an older brother, and something that I figured out really early on is that if he could get away with it, I could get away with it too. And if he couldn't get away with it, I learned how to do it without getting caught. That exact same concept applies to the standard tuning that we use on the guitar, which features a Big Brother, the low E, and the Little Brother, high E. Because they're both tuned to the same note, if this one can do it in a chord or scale, so can this one. Let me show you how this big brother, little brother concept applies in some scale pattern ideas. See, the first A minor scale that I ever learned looked like this. It ends with a single note on the high E string, the A note right here, right? But what if I wanted to play more notes above that one, right? What do I do? Do I have to learn other scale patterns that show me what to do? No, not really. If Big Brother can do it, so can Little Brother, right? Earlier in the scale pattern, we saw that the low E string here used 5, 7, and 8, or A, B, C, if you're thinking about the notes, which you should. So if the low E string can do it, so can the high E string. So I can extend that scale pattern out by mimicking Big Brother once I reach Little Brother. This mirroring of the two E strings works out for every single scale pattern. It's especially evident when you play those minor pentatonic shapes. Take a look at the first box here. So we can see Big Brother here started off with five and eight, or A and C. And then what is Little Brother doing? The exact same thing, five and eight, A and C. If we play the second position or major pentatonic box, you're gonna see the exact same thing. Big Brother here starts off with 8 and 10, right? C to D. Little Brother, exact same thing. You can use that exact same string mirroring concept inside of your chord playing as well to come up with some really cool sounding inversions. So let's take for example like your common D major chord, right? We can see inside of that voicing there that we've got the high E string on fret number 2 on the F sharp note, right? If you want to, you could also add in the low E string on fret two. Again, just match what Little Brother's doing right there for a really thick sounding inversion of that chord. We'd call that a D over F sharp chord. Myself, I call that the Freebird D. Just don't call it late for dinner, am I right? <laughs> Use that same logic whenever you're playing bar chord shapes that have their root note on the A string, like the C sus2 chord. Now you can see right there that the low E string is unused in this chord shape, but the high E string, little brother, is here on the G note on fret number three. That means that if I wanted to, I could take that chord shape and also grab the low E string three under my bar. That gives us a super thick sound that prog rockers like Joe Petrumi and Alicia Lifehouse use in their playing all the time. It's got more better bass. The next trick I'm gonna show you here is one that you can use to take the intimidating task of learning every note on the fretboard and literally cut the work in half. I call it big neck, little neck. One of the first things that I ever learned about the layout of the fretboard of the guitar is that for any note that you have, like let's say this fourth fret G sharp note on the low E string, if you add the number 12 to it, you can find that exact same note one octave higher. So four plus 12 
Last time I checked is 16. So if we go up here to fret number 16, we get the exact same note one octave higher. And while that's absolutely true, I found that concept to be a little bit cumbersome to use while playing because it involves doing maths while playing music notes with my arm hands. And I was homeschooled. I can't math like that. But still, I used it for years until I noticed something blatantly obvious about the neck that I never saw before. Okay, the double dots here at fret number 12 are where every string becomes itself again, right? If we play every note on the low E string all the way up chromatically, when we reach 12, that's where it becomes E again. That's where A becomes A again, and so on. So you could say, in effect, that's where the neck starts over, because you've cycled through all 12 notes. So the neck has two starting points on it, the open strings and the 12th fret. We have a big neck that takes place from here to here. We have a little neck that takes place from here to here. Big neck, little neck. The fretboard position markers that we all use to guide our hand fingers around the neck right here are the exact same on the big neck as they are on the little neck. Let me show you what I mean. I learned really early on that there was a G note down here on the third fret low E string because that was the root note of my big old G chord, right? So that third fret dot became sort of my eyeball guide for knowing where G was. First dot on the neck, there's where you can find G. Now, if I go up here and I use those double dots here at fret number 12 to be my marker for where the neck restarts and becomes the little neck, and I locate that first dot on the little neck, guess what? There's a G note. There's a G note down here on the first dot. There's a G note up here on the first dot. Let's say through your efforts of learning the entire Van Halen catalog, you figure out that there's an A note right here at the second dot on the big neck. Well, you don't need to also try and memorize that there's another A at 5 plus 12, 17. Even saying it out loud like that, you realize how confusing that is. If there's an A on the second dot on the big neck, there's an A on the second dot of the little neck too. But also train yourself to memorize the notes that are in between the dots as well. So for example, you might learn that in between the first and second dots here on the second string is an E flat note. Learn to recognize that on the little neck as well. Here's the first dot, here's the second dot, in between them is that same E flat note an octave higher. This may be a super obvious concept to some of you guys, but I know that I've shown that same idea to players who've been playing even longer than I have, and they had never noticed it before. Learning it this way is fantastic because it just really cuts down on the amount of work that you have to do. Instead of learning that there's a G at three and 15, or an F sharp at seven and 19 or whatever, you just kind of learn it as well. That note's on that dot, so it's on that dot too. I've been looking at the neck this way for so long now that I don't even really think about what frets I'm playing whenever I'm playing up here on the little neck. I'm just looking at it as the exact same thing as what's happening down here, just more smaller. Fret smarter, not harder. The next trick that we're gonna talk about is one of the most common ones that guitar players use, but you gotta learn it from somewhere, and I'd rather you hear about it from me than out there on the streets. If in doubt, octave it out. As guitar players, we use the low E and A strings all the time to root out chord and scale shapes. So as an effect of that, you're probably gonna end up learning the notes across those two strings more thoroughly than you do the rest. And you can use your knowledge of those two strings to help you fill in the gaps on some of the other strings that you might not know as well. I've noticed that a lot of guitar players, for example, have this kind of like Bermuda triangle of notes they don't really know that well happening right here on the neck. But if you know the bottom strings well enough, that's not gonna be a problem anymore. And all that you gotta know is the two by two rule of octaves. Let's say that I'm playing the fifth fret on the third string and I don't know what that note is. Well, with the two by two trick, you can figure it out really easily. Drop down two frets, one, two. Then what I want you to do is to move up two strings, one, two. So now you're looking at the A string third fret. You probably know that note is a C. That's where you put your C chord and stuff, right? That is the exact same note as that one, just in a different octave. So if this is a C, then by God, that's a C as well. And all you gotta know is two by two, and that'll lead you to the note that you're looking for. Let's say I'm playing the ninth fret on the D, and I don't know what that note is. Well, if I drop down one, two, then move up one, two, I probably know that that's a B note. So there you go, Eureka, this is a B. The only thing you've really gotta remember here is that if you're trying to find a note on the B string, this two by two thing doesn't really work anymore, and that's due to the tuning of the guitar and the mixed bag of intervals that we use. Now, if you're trying to find a note on the B, like let's say the eighth fret right here, two by two won't do it. That doesn't spell out an octave anymore. You've gotta go three by two, okay? So you're gonna go down three frets, one, two, three, up two strings, 
If you don't know what that note is, right? You can hear the octaves right there. But if you don't know what that note is, go back to two by two. One, two, one, two. And you realize that that's a G, so that's a G. So that must be a G. Ain't nothing but a G thing. And if you're trying to figure out what a note is on the high E string, like let's say fret number five right here, I don't recommend resorting to octaves here. You need to get more in the habit of thinking of it as being a clone of the low E string. Big brother, little brother, just like what we talked about earlier in the video. So if you're not sure what that note is, well you do know what that note is. That's an A note right there. So therefore, that one must also be an A. So just remember, if in doubt, octave it out. And the last trick that I want to show you here is using checkpoints across the board to help you quickly figure out what note you're on. A checkpoint is just a note that you know for sure, and you should be able to either count up or count down from it to figure out what note you're on. So typically whenever I ask a player what the seventh fret on the low E string is, they'll automatically use a checkpoint, a known note in other words, and count up to it until they find what that note is. E, again that's your checkpoint. F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. And then if I ask that same person what fret number 10 is, they'll retreat back to that low checkpoint and count all the way up, all 10 notes, until they find that they're at the note D. Instead, they could have made the process a lot faster by using another checkpoint and walking down to that note to figure out what it was. And if you know the tuning of the guitar, you already know at least two checkpoints because you'll know that the open strings are E, A, D, G, B, E, and then on the 12th fret, it's the same thing, E, A, D, G, B, E. So there's at least two checkpoints that you already know. And if you have a 24 fret guitar like I do, there is a third checkpoint for the little neck. So anyway, instead of trying to figure out what this note was by counting all the way up all 10 notes from that checkpoint, you could have just done it in two moves by using this checkpoint. You know that's E, right? So if you know the order of the notes, you can go E, E flat, D, rather than counting all the way up from here. This is also great too because it really helps you learn to count the musical alphabet forwards and backwards. And this is one of those things that everybody struggles with because whenever we learn the alphabet, you know, in kindergarten or preschool or whatever, we only learn it in ascending order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I think for pretty much everybody saying that backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, is always gonna be something that takes a little bit more concentration. But if you make it a point to learn that musical alphabet in ascending and descending order, which isn't too bad, there's only 12 notes, you'll be able to find those notes much more fastlier. Plus, if you can say the alphabet backwards really well, it might even help you avoid a DUI if you get pulled over driving drunk. No, I'm just kidding. If you get pulled over driving drunk, you deserve a DUI. Fuck you, take an Uber. You can get in the habit of thinking this way by using this rule of thumb. If you're trying to figure out a note that's at the fifth fret or below, use this checkpoint and count up to it. Meanwhile, if you're trying to figure out a note that's at fret number six or above, use the 12th fret checkpoint and count down to it. And probably along the way, you'll end up learning other checkpoints as you go, like the dot notes and stuff like that. And at that point, you can cover the neck with a ton of little checkpoints, so that way you're never counting all the way up to find what note you're playing. I actually have even more fretboard navigation stuff up my sleeve though, including the method that I use to hardwire the positions of the notes on every string all across the board with my students. I've actually been sitting on that information for a while because it's not the method that I usually see people use, and I'm thinking about putting that out as like a buyable lesson pack or something like that, maybe in 2021. Let me know if that's something that would interest you guys in the comments below. Thank you guys as always for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new content coming at you every week, and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. If you like these videos and want to get even more out of them, be sure to support my channel over on patreon.com slash benellerguitars. That way you can get all the goods. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but it's time for me to go out and change the muffler bearings on my car, and it's time for you guys to start navigating that neck more better. So get away from the computer, pick up your guitar, and get to work. Less clicking, more picking.